Howdy folks, Kato here with another third party Transformers review. Today I'm going to take a look at New Age Legendary Heroes H31 and H32, Croquel and Marbus. But just like with Rom and Vine, which was named Rum and Vane on the box, this is actually named Carcel or Carcel and Morbus. But all the promo stuff and the actual labeling on websites is Croquel and Morbus or Marbus, which makes more sense because it keeps in line with their whole demonic uh, naming system that they have going on. Because Croquel and Marbus, just Google it, it's very creepy demonic names. But in this case, I'm going to call them Scrapper and uh, Mixmaster from here on out because even New Age doesn't know what they want to call them. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're going to roll the intro and take a look at New Age H31 and H32, Croquel and Marvis, Scrapper and Mixmaster. It's Kato! Before we get started, I want to say a huge thank you to all my current subscribers. You guys are helping me on that 4,000 subscriber goal by TFCon in October, and at this point, I'm just over 300 subscribers away. I'd also like to say a big thank you to all my channel members. You can see all of their names scrolling here. And a massive special shout out to those channel members that have decided to go the extra mile and become my highest tier beast level channel members. If you guys are interested in becoming channel members, click that join button below this video. Unless you're on one of those evil Apple devices, click the join link in the description. And as always, follow me across social media, Facebook at Kato's Collection Reviews and Instagram at Kato's underscore collection. First things first, we'll take a look at the packaging. Uh, traditional New Age packaging, New Age Legendary Heroes, writing that I can't even pretend to understand. Uh, you see Scrapper and Mixmaster there inside the window. You've got H31 Carcel and H32 Morbus. Again, Scrapper and Mixmaster from here on out. On the top, Constructagon Carcel. On the bottom, Materials Morbus. On the side, you've got a final look at the fully combined mode with Mixmaster and the fully combined mode with Scrapper there. On the back, you've got some artwork of Scrapper and Mixmaster there holding some Energon cubes, and this is part of their Hephaestus set. Inside the packaging for accessories, you get six more Energon cubes, and they are the same exact things that we got with the previous release of Rom and Vane. Of course, you get their weapons. This is Mixmaster's gun. Very simple sculpt, very cartoonish. Not a whole lot of detail, but it's not meant to have a whole lot of detail. This set is definitely designed to be more of a cartoon accurate type set. And you get Scrapper's gun. Same basic design. A little bit more detail on this one just because it's a little larger weapon. But I absolutely love these guns. And just like the previous set, you get a couple of trumpets uh, for the coronation uh, scene that we have in the movie. So that uh, all the Constructicons will have these uh, trumpets so that you can reenact that Starscream coronation scene painted in gold they look very cool lastly you get the instructions and they come in very handy but um, I recommend watching myself or uh, someone else transform these because there are some steps in here that could use a bit of help with especially these first couple and I'll go over it in the transformation but both characters here on one sheet so first up, we look at Scrapper, and again, right away, I absolutely love how these look. Let me get close up here so we can see that head sculpt. And the Constructicons themselves, they have pretty basic head sculpts as it is, so it's not like you're going to get a lot of detail. But if you're looking for accuracy and good paint, this is a beautiful choice. Look at that red inside the visor there. You've got some red on the chest, black, silver, and purple on the full chest. Going down, you've got the gray and black with the purple on the crotch. And that's where the color really ends other than just the basic detail of the robot itself, which is pretty standard. You've got nicely done wheels there. I love that. They're plastic, but they roll just fine. And on the back, you get not a lot of kibble. I think that folds up really nicely on the back. I like how this looks overall. 
I mean, some hollow bit there in the back, but I mean, what are you gonna do? Stuff's gotta go somewhere. I wanna throw up here the image, like a G1 cartoon image, just so you guys can see a comparison side by side with what the G1 artwork looked like as compared to this. And I think they really, really did a great job. For articulation, his head is on a ball joint, so you can get a little, just a fraction of wobble side to side and around, and you can see he can look up and down a reasonable amount. I think that's good, and of course, spin 360. The arms will go out that far, swivel here at the bicep and right under oof, yeah not right at 90 degrees for the uh, elbow bend and you do get a wrist swivel and some in and out there from transformation the waist you get 360 and i believe one of these has um, more ab crunch than the other but it's very difficult to use okay i, I see that I don't know if there's an ab crunch here or not. I don't feel like there is, so I'm not gonna really struggle to do that. Legs will go out that far. Uh, they will come up straight, go back. Uh, knee bend plenty because of transformation, rotation at the uh, upper thigh there, plenty of ankle tilt and, or ankle pivot and some downward tilt because of transformation. I mean, the, the articulation is really, really good on these. You kind of get a double knee there if you use that transformation joint. I like this a lot. Now, as we start to look at Mixmaster, I'm gonna do the same thing, put an image over there to the right of his G1 artwork, and you can see, measure for yourself how you think that turned out. I think it turned out pretty great. Now, going into the details, I absolutely love that head sculpt. And actually, let me do one more thing. You can flip this out here at the top. So it can look a little more traditional to have those sticking out the front. I love that head sculpt. I think it is a fantastic look. Those red eyes with the gray face. He's a bit frowny, which is great. Purple chest, red there on the uh, upper right of his chest. Some grayish black circles there. I think, really think they nailed it. Purple down the legs and blue on the feet. The one thing that kind of is weird is he's got these platform shoes here because of transformation and all this is empty it kind of weirds me out a little bit it, every time i look at an image of him i just think he's got hollow platform shoes on and you can see here you've got a little bit of ankle tilt i'll go over that in articulation uh, which you know, may as well do that but as far as the backpack goes i love how uh, the mixer bit transforms i'll go over that in just a bit but there is a look at the back articulation on him is a little different because this piece is all connected here to the top. So you still get about the same range of movement, uh, maybe a little less up and down in the back there, but the head will rotate a full 360. But he just has this piece on here, which is always the way, right? Arms out that far, bend 90, you've got rotation. You do have, uh, let's see, this one does not have rotation at the wrist because of that transformation joint, if I can get it to focus. So no rotation at the wrist there. That's kind of a bummer because New Age is normally really good about that. You get swivel uh, at the hips and this is one where you actually get a nice ab crunch there. So that's good. Legs straight out, uh, straight up. You can move the hip skirt out of the way, get the leg straight up. It's a bit of an odd transformation joint here at the knee. Uh, it will go uh, reasonably far back. It looks like it gets stopped by a little tab right there. You've got a swivel at the upper thigh, nice knee bend. And as I said before, I really don't like that knee joint. It's just weird. Uh, as I said before, you've got this uh, kind of fake, it's not a fake, it is an actual ankle tilt, uh, but no real pivot there other than the transformation piece. So I guess that counts. The feet are just weird to me. For a quick comparison in robot mode, there they are beside Magic Square's Wild Rider and New Age's Ricochet. And there they are beside Magic Square's Shockwave and something a little more chug scale, there's Prowl. And there they are with their buddies and the all that we have so far in this set. 
Now let's get into transformation. With Scrapper, he is probably the most precarious to transform, mostly because of his how his upper body uh, transforms. But first you wanna get, uh, just get this uh, shovel out of the way, the bucket out of the way here. Now you want to go ahead and put the hands in. Now, there's two pieces here, two parts to this transformation coming up to cover the head. The first is this chest piece, and it's it's pretty tight when you first get it. So you just want to pull, oh God, it's so scary. Pull that up, and you can use that brake right here to help you do that. Uh, a good friend, Deluxe Baldwin, his was really tight, and he had some real trouble with that, but thanks to his warning, I was able to work that out. So it just pushes all the way up to about right there, Next, this entire uh, back piece, all the green here, uh, is also on a slider. I find it easier if you grab right here at uh, the waist and start to pull up and you separate. And you can see there's a bit of a joint there for what I assume will be uh, combined mode. But you have that double slider for this piece and this piece. Now you're gonna rotate this to the side just like that. And that is pretty much the most precarious thing you'll do in this transformation. Now you're going to simply fold in the arms on a double hinge. You can see it right there, collapsing in and peg into the side. There are little, little pegs, holes right there for the side. You can see the peg on the side and the hole there to get those in and the upper body should look something like this when you're done. Now for the legs, you're going to get your finger in here, lift these pieces up right here, and you're essentially gonna fold everything. Oh yeah, put the toe in. Definitely put the toe in first. Fold all this over, and if you want, you can peg it together first. It's not necessary, but you can do that. And then fold all that up so that it sits very awkward, right? Now the wheels, you're going to rotate those down. These were really tight too at first. Rotate those down so everything starts to sit level. Now this piece right here, you're gonna bring up on a double hinge and put that straight up. It's a kind of weird, but you're gonna get that straight up. Put the bucket down the way you want it and you got scrapper, oh yeah couple other things you can do. That's one thing I wanted to point out. The teeth on the bucket can come undone pretty easy. If you push right there, you can get these teeth to come out fairly simple. And that way you have all the teeth on the bucket ready to go. And he is in his very simple, but very effective alt mode. Now for Mixmaster, it's about the same way. You're gonna lift this up, tuck this back in, put that down. You have the arms, you're just gonna fold those up, get the hands folded in, come around to the back, fold this out, lift this up and open this. And what that's gonna do is allow you to bring out the entirety of the, uh, can there the mixer now a lot like scrapper he's got he's on a slider here so i like to use these two spots right here to pull up on and it's really just separating right there so that you can bring up and cover the head now you're going to lift the arms up and peg them into the side pretty straightforward here then Bring that down to right there, and really just get this uh, get this into a position where you think it makes the most sense for you. I like it pretty much like that. For the feet, now you can peg these together if you want. I find it a little easier not to, but you're gonna open this part up here right at the base of the knee. Now you're gonna hold here and just swivel this piece around what would have been the ankle tilt or the ankle pivot there to bring that up to that level right there. Fold flat, 
just like this and there might be yeah there's some little tab spots right there on the legs to keep that flat right there now with these tabbed in here all you really want to do is collapse everything here and on this side you'll do the same thing just bring everything down so that it covers up the front of the cab there and tab it all together snap those in and there you have Mixmaster in vehicle mode. Now, as we get started looking at Mixmaster, I want to put up over here to the right a picture of his G1 cartoon counterpart in alt mode. And again, you can judge for yourself how you think this turned out. But overall, I think it looks amazing. And in alt mode, he really, really does look great. It's very small. It, it really is small. And I, I have the Magic Square ones coming as well, so I'll be able to compare those side by side but it's, it's a bit bigger than what seems like matchbox size. Nice purple details. You can see the windows there, the gray on the front. I like that the pins uh, for the wheels actually end up making the wheels, which are detailed very well for such small wheels. You can see the treads in there. On the back, you've got the mixer. I think it looks brilliant. And the same goes for Scrapper in alt mode. Now, Scrapper is not, there's not a lot of detail to be had on Scrapper, right? You can see some smoke pipes here on the back. The wheels are detailed very well with the rivets. Uh, you can see the canopy there, but there's not a whole lot of detail to go over uh, in their alt mode. And it's it's very, you know, cartoon and G1 accurate, but uh, just not a lot going on. So if that's what you're looking for, then you win. If you're looking for a whole lot of detail, then this might not be for you but i like how the teeth come out there again be very careful with these because when they unfold they're just a tiny little peg and they're holding on rolls just fine for a quick size comparison there they are beside new age jazz and magic squares wild rider just for the heck of it there they are beside deluxe class smokescreen and there is the gang so far. It is shaping up to be a very good looking set and I cannot wait to complete it and to get the Magic Square ones in to compare them to. So there you have it folks, my review of New Age H31 and 32 Scrapper and Mixmaster. Overall, this set is shaping up really well. Uh, downsides in vehicle mode, I mean, they're pretty basic, especially Scrapper. There's not a lot of detail going on there. There really doesn't need to be if that's the type of accuracy you're going for. If you're going for that tune look and that uh, not quite toy look, which it wouldn't be surprised if they release a toy version of this later too. Again, not a lot of paint detail in vehicle mode. Mixmaster looks great. I love their transformation. I absolutely love the engineering from a robot to vehicle mode. I think they are brilliant. But speaking of robot mode, I think they look absolutely amazing in robot mode. And real quick before i get it in the comments and in case no one watches the entire video all the way through i did miss something in articulation scrapper actually has articulated hands they actually open and close on a single hinge and i think that's awesome i did not realize that until i tried to put the trumpet in his hand just now that's pretty spectacular on a legend scale figure okay overall there's not really a lot of downsides in robot mode. The only one that's really glaring to me is the hollowness in uh, Mixmaster's let in his feet, like those platform shoes he has on, but it's pretty minor. Uh, I am getting the magic square set. I've just got to decide which one I want to leave in robot mode, which one I want to leave in combined mode. But overall, this set is shaping up to be really, really amazing. Uh, U.S. retail, they range about $109 for the two, so it's about $55 per Legend Scale figure. So take that as you wish. That is for your pocket to decide, not me. I see the value in it. I think they are designed fantastically and really, really serve the part of the Legend Scale Devastator that I'm looking forward to. Can't wait to finish this set. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I really do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, smash that like button. If you didn't, smash the like button anyway. It doesn't hurt anything. If you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. Of course, the other rejected cons are Sardo News by 82, Larkins Lair, and Inu Tabi. Their links are in the description below. And until next time, this is Kato signing out. See you around like a donut. Kato!